This morning in Health Watch, it's time for a good laugh. <laughs> and if these people leave you smiling or maybe even laughing, a new medical study can explain it. And our Dr. Emily Sine is here with the tales. I was hoping you would come on with a little red rubber <laughs> nose this morning. I'm uh, funny enough without that. That's I need right. That. Now, what, so there is a, a serious study yes. about laughter, and what, what does it find? There is, there is. Well, obviously, we know that laughter can be contagious, but researchers in England wanted to know why this is. What is it about laughter that we just, you know, can't stop being infected by it? So mm -hmm. they actually took 20 volunteers, hooked them up to MRI machines, hooked them up to uh, uh, devices, electrodes that measured their facial muscles, right. and then they played for them a variety of different sounds. Some of it was like triumphant sounds like woohoo some of right. it was laughter some mm -hmm. of it was sounds that are like fear and disgust no words just sounds right and then monitored what was going on inside their brains and what their facial muscles were doing right and what are they what what, what, what kind of conclusions did well they come what to? they found that was when people heard amusement or sounds of joy parts of the brain that were activated were those parts of the brain uh, that control the facial muscles and right. they were much more likely to be activated when they heard those sounds like uh, laughter or amusement or joy than they, than they were when they heard sounds like fear or right. disgust. So there's something involuntary going on inside the brain that's actually greater with those kind of mm. sounds than fear yeah, or disgust. All right, all right. Let me play the skeptic because in any kind of research methodology, you're thinking, okay, well, they're predisposed. Right. They know what the deal is here, so they're going to help laugh sure. because it's a laughter study. Well, they got around that by tricking the participants. They didn't tell them okay. what the study was about. In fact, they misled them a little bit and told them it was about facial perspiration. But, <laughs> at, <laughs> but, at the, <laughs> but at the end of the study, right. uh, when they revealed to the participants what it was that they were actually looking for, they, the participants all said, as anybody would, well, I couldn't help it. Right. When I heard the laughter, I heard the sounds of joy, huh. I just had to laugh. Wow. So uh, it's actually something deep inside our brain that makes us respond to other people's laughter. So, so, so laughter is contagious. It then. is contagious and it's a good thing because we're social animals and part of interacting in a group is responding, uh, responding and reacting to the way other people are responding and reacting. And mm -hmm. laughter is one way that we sort of are all together. We're much more likely to laugh in a group than we are alone. For right. example, if you're in a theater and people are laughing around you, I mean, it all sort of makes sense and hangs together. Exactly, because we've been talking about some studies about people who live alone and that they don't live as long as others with better social relationships. That's right. And if you really want to get along and, and be healthy, it doesn't hurt That's to have right. a sense of humor. And it also proves laugh and the whole world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. alone. <laughs> wow, you are the best. Give me some of that, all right?